Good evening, everybody. Uh, today, uh, we are having the fourth webinar of the series of nine webinars that Karnataka Forest Department is uh, conducting uh, in run-up to the Wildlife Week celebration this year. So this webinar, actually, we all know that uh, there are uh, millions of species. You can't hear anything. Hello, can you hear me? Somebody is speaking in between. Uh, please uh, request all the participants to mute, your, mute yourself. Uh, otherwise, it will be disturbing to the speakers. George, want to say something? Hmm. Hello. There is some disturbance, actually. Uh, no internet. Ah. Hmm? Internet is gone. Uh, George, can you mute the other, uh, the other participant, please? Uh. Janardhan, KR, please uh, mute yourself. I am in first class. George, I can't hear you, but uh, I'm hearing some other voices. Yes, sir, you can go ahead now. Uh, yeah, yeah. But I am a lot of disturbance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too much disturbance. Oh, is there. Hey, Someone should please. Is there? Are there yes, a meeting here? Yes, yes, yes. Sir, so, so many voice coming in. Please mute yourself because there touched. is some problem with <laughs> the admin side. Uh, kindly request all the people to mute yourself. Okay, Tarani, good. Ah, hello. Can you hear me now? Uh, just anybody, one, one can say. It is better. Yes. Yeah. Sir. yeah. Good evening once again. Better. Actually, so let let's because this uh, webinar will be for one hour. And uh, started, it was supposed to start at 4.30. We are delayed by 10 minutes. And uh, we'll be ending maybe at 5, uh, 45 or so, uh, uh, something like that. So keep the this session, webinar will be very focused one. As we know that there are uh, millions of species in the earth, and uh, many of them, uh, you know, have invisible also. And the species, all the species that are in, existing on this earth have some role to play and ecological role basically and today we are having a very interesting topic on the role of ant uh, in the ecosystem on the ecology and today we session will be of one hour and uh, we have one guest speaker mr mr sunil and uh, the keynote address will be uh, delivered by our uh, additional pcc of wildlife sri malkade sir so i welcome Sri Malkade, sir, the, for the keynote address and the um, uh, uh, guest speaker of the day, Sunil, and uh, all, the, all the participants to this uh, webinar and all the, parts, uh, all the uh, media supporters and uh, our uh, CE partners. Uh, I welcome once again and uh, let, I request uh, Malkade, sir, to go ahead with the keynote address. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Malkade. Good afternoon, everyone. Those, all those who have joined for this webinar. Uh, on behalf of Karnataka Forest Department, I thank all of you for having uh, joined. Sir. Today's uh, topic in this series is ants. Now, there is no one, I think, amongst us who has not seen an ant or not got bitten by an ant any time in life. So right from childhood, ants have always been fascinating us. Uh, especially whenever there is any sweet trail left anywhere, you get a new trail that is ants trail. And Malkade, sir, you are muted, sir. Please uh, unmute, sir. And, sir. Ants have been there on this earth much before human beings came. And they are, they are there and they, therefore they have evolved into a very uh, highly evolved species, I would say. And there are around 12,000 species of ants all over the world. 
uh, we may see very few ants in our neighborhood, but there are more than 600 species in India alone. And they have learned how to coexist with human beings. That's why we can see them all around us, whether it is in home, in our backyard, in our gardens, and we get plenty uh, different species in our forests too. The species has given humans uh, kind of lessons all through. They are they are very small, tiny creatures. However, in united way, that is together, they show how a strength can be built. So their motto is strength in unity. That's why they can take on any species, uh, any larger species also. <clears throat> And they are always busy, as you can see. If you find one uh, sugar grain anywhere, all of a sudden you will have a large number of ants coming there within half an hour or 45 minutes. Moreover, ants have been good architects all through. Uh, their uh, homes that they construct are really marvel for modern day architects also. And they make various kinds of chambers in their houses uh, based on the work that each ant is carrying out and their size, age, based on that, they make different chambers. Where we have our rooms, uh, different room for kids, different for adults, different for old people. Similarly, they also make certain uh, kinds of modification in their uh, structures of the rooms that they construct and build. Today, we have with us Sri, Sri Sunil Kumar, who holds master's degree in environmental science from Bangalore, uh, Bangalore University, and his fascination for ants uh, started at University uh, Center for Ecological Sciences in Indian Institute of Science, and he has uh, walked with ants several times, and he has conducted many sessions for people, uh, naturalists, to understand ants. And he must have done more than 100 uh, such walkathons and conducted many more trainings and workshops to understand ants, their behavior, social structure, and mainly role of ants in conservation. I think uh, in conservation, all the species in this world are conservation oriented, except I think for human being who is more non-conservation oriented species of this um, in the whole ecosystem. And we will also learn the fascinating, fascinating aspects about ants and their behavior and uh, their propagation and the way they construct their houses, etc. And Sri Sunil Kumar has also written a book on a trail with ants. And that's a wonderful book. Uh, which uh, I think all of us should have a copy of it, uh, which is uh, which gives us a narration about ants that are specially found in Karnataka and with uh, pictures and everything. I think uh, he will be also taking all your questions. So uh, I think uh, I will excuse myself and allow Sri Sunil Kumar M to take up uh, his lecture on ants with, and their fascinating world. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for the keynote address. Actually, uh, you have made my job easy by introducing the guest speaker of the day also. Uh, the, uh, Mr. Sunil, uh, as sir has already briefed, is an expert in uh, um, uh, the ant studies, basically, myrmecology, the field is called. And very few people who actually worked on this field. And one of such work is, is published in the book. And it's very interesting for the young lads who are actually, I am happy to see that uh, the uh, younger generation, the kids are in a good number in this today's webinar, and they'll definitely be benefiting from the uh, today's uh, webinar session. I request now uh, Sri Srinil uh, to take over the session, and I will just uh, before that I will say that at the end of this uh, uh, presentation, uh, we will have a quiz quizzing also, and there will be two types of quizzing. One is uh, online quizzing, and there will be offline link also will be provided later on. They can participate in the offline quiz as well. And right now, the quiz will also, the best uh, will be uh, given some uh, format will be there and we'll get how are the 
participants even for the participation you will get a certificate uh, that's a format of it and uh, request all the uh, participant to keep your questions to the end one secondly whenever you have a questions in coming in put it in the chat box instead of trying to intervene the uh, speaker so that the flow will be better so now i request uh, sunil to take over uh, i excuse myself thank you uh thank you sir uh, am i audible can you hear me yes we can yeah okay uh firstly uh, i should uh, thank uh, uh, the forest department the karnataka forest department uh, and center for uh, uh, environment education actually for uh, inviting me uh, to this uh, um, session uh, on ants and uh, um i'm grateful to uh, mr uh, subhash malkade mr natesh and also santosh uh, uh, for, for uh, uh, actually um, asking asking me to host this uh, session but also for for the kind of words of introduction that they have done for us um so uh, uh ants as you know i mean the uh, the most commonest of the wildlife uh, that we can see i mean uh we uh, many of us might not have seen a tiger or a lion or a, a, a leopard for example but uh, the most commonest one wildlife that we all would have seen or uh, are the ants so so uh, this session uh, since uh, there is a mixture of audience i'll try to keep it as simple as possible so that all of us understand appreciate and uh, 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 are uh, in awe of the uh, Uh, interesting uh, facets of ants itself so firstly um, i'll start off uh, uh, with a small presentation and uh, please feel free to either stop me or ask any questions uh, so i'll start off with my session so can you see the uh, presentation yes sir yes sir okay uh, so uh, so quickly i mean uh, since this is the most commonest uh, species that you have seen uh, uh, i'm sure you would know what an ant is so i don't need to describe what an ant is right but nevertheless i'll tell you how to if you see an ant uh, how do you identify an ant so that's uh, something which um, i will um, uh, uh, one minute please okay so um, how do you identify an ant any uh, any idea hello sir yeah sir how do you identify sir, you can identify the ant by its color okay by its size okay sir sir your ant usually your ant through its behavior okay behavior that's nice so the uh, ants okay. usually uh, uh, walk in a row it's like they go in a group and they're yeah, not alone okay that that's also interesting so i'll tell you i mean if you see an ant uh, sometimes there are also spiders and other bugs which mimic ants so um, you might uh, uh, generally you might uh, know i mean what an ant is but when the, there are ant mimicking spiders among them then that's when the trouble comes in how do you identify an ant so i'll uh, take you to the basics okay what is an ant have uh, ant will have a net so right all of you would agree it will have feelers or antennae right then there's the body of an ant um, then there's the abdomen and how many pairs of legs would an ant have sir three okay sir six three pairs sir so they have six of legs so three pairs yeah, three pairs yeah. three pairs to the six legs yes, three pairs right So when you pick up an ant, just look for how many number of legs. You see, you have three pairs of legs. Then let's look at the feeler or the antennae. The antennae will be bent. It will be like an elbow. So it will not be straight. If you have seen a cockroach, cockroach antennae will be straight. If you look at a butterfly antennae, antennae will be bent at the bulb at the end. But whereas for an ant, it will be a bent antennae with the segment. Okay. and the most important part of an ant uh, how do you distinguish between this thorax region and the abdomen there are these connecting joints so 
So if you don't see the connecting joints, then it will be very difficult to identify um, uh, uh, whether it's an ant or not. So always look uh, for those. Sorry, sorry to intervene. Sorry to intervene. Uh... Yeah. Others, others, uh, please mute yourself. Otherwise, you know, there will be disturbance in the voice. So when the guest speak, when, the, when you want to ask question, unmute and then again uh, mute back. Okay, please. Yes, sir. Some of them are actually, uh, now the speaker, the, the mic is on. Please switch off your mics. Okay. Thank you, sir. So, uh, so the most important part uh, uh, the feature of an ant is this waste or the uh, part uh, which is called as the petiole. So there are two node-like things between the abdomen and as well as the thorax. So what the bent antennae, the uh, petiole, then three pairs of legs. If you see this, I'm sure it will be an ant. Okay. And of course, uh, some of you pointed out the behavior aspect. The behavior aspect what I want to point is uh, no ant lives alone. So ants are social insects, so they always live in groups. So they are always part of a family. So you can't, you won't see an ant alone. Um, if you see an ant alone, it must be part of a nest. And um, if you, for example, away from the nest for various reasons and then can't get back into the nest, it will die. Okay, so what I'm saying is social insects, they work like groups and they also divide their work. So uh, where are ants found? So as we, as you all mentioned, uh, they are present everywhere, right from within your homes, uh, parks. If you went on the footpath, you will see lots of ants. If you are uh, in an agricultural field, you will find ants. If it's forest, you will find ants. But there are a couple of uh, places where you will not find any ants. So those are where uh, places which are permanently ice capped. So suppose you went to the North Pole, which is always under ice. You will not see ants unless ice glaciers um, start melting. Okay. The other uh, place would be very high altitude um, areas. If you went to the Mount Everest, uh, search for an ant, you will not get it. Or if you went to the oceans or permanently filled water, so you will not find ants. Um, so, but otherwise, uh, ants are one of those uh, very successful creatures found across the globe. And uh, worldwide, uh, there are more than 14,000 spe species, uh, but scientists uh, estimate there could be close to about 22,000 species. Um, and uh, in India alone, there are 846 species that have been documented. And uh, if you went um, uh, uh, finding ants in Bangalore, you'll find at least more than 100, 100 species. So imagine um, 100 species of ants when most of us, uh, if I ask you, uh, how many ants do you know? You will say, sir, I know a red ant, black ant, the big ant, the small ant. So beyond that, if I ask for ants, you will say, sir, sorry. But uh, if you went around uh, carefully observing, um, uh, you will find more than 100 species. Uh, so this is some of the work that I've done as well, where uh, I've, uh, through my uh, research, I uh, uh, found about 77 species of ants in Bangalore alone. Okay. And uh, some of the highest species uh, of ants, uh, where will you find in Bangalore? If you, the two, two or three places that you find a lot of ants are uh, obviously one is if you went to Lalbagh, Kaban Park, or if you went to uh, uh, GKVK campus. Uh, these are three areas where you will get a lot of ants. I mean, more than 50 to 60 species of ants um, uh, as a, uh, and a minimum that you will get. Okay. But uh, why do we not see so many species? Because we don't observe them carefully. So my message is ants are everywhere, but uh, we don't observe them carefully to distinguish them because for us, ants are ants, so oh, they're very small, sir, what what, uh, what can they do? I mean, but if I showed you a tiger or a lion, you'll say, oh, you'll jump with joy and then say, oh, tiger, but an ant, because of its small size, you'd say, oh, okay, civilized it, right? So you will next, I mean, one of the questions that people ask is, okay, why should I watch ants? What is it? Uh, the ants, uh, yeah. Sir, I had a doubt, sir. Could you please repeat where and all they are not found? What I said was a permanently ice capped region. Suppose it's permanent ice for permafrost or if you went to the North Pole or the South Pole or if you went to on top of the uh, Mount Everest, for example, 
wherever there's permanent ice throughout the year okay you'll not find ants if you find yeah, if there is a patch of land completely filled with water throughout the year you might not find ants for example oceans sea you will not find ants whereas you'll find ants in mangroves uh, because there are also vegetation and uh, ants can make their uh, nest on uh, mang mangrove trees okay so uh, sir, can you repeat the identifications again the okay so the identification. There are three things I told you. One is the bent shaped antennae. If you can see the cursor, this is the antennae of the feeler. It is bent in shape. Okay. Then between this part, that is the thorax, if you know, and the abdomen, there is this joint. So which is called as the petiole. So because there are ant mimic spiders, there are some bugs which look like ants. Sometimes we think they are also ants, but if you look at them carefully under a ant lens, or if you have a uh, if you have a lens in your home, you can always pick up an ant and look at it carefully. Or if you want to, if you are if provided, if you go back to school in a few months' time, then you can collect a few ants and then look them, look at them under the microscope in your school. Then you'll find that there is some joint, inch inch like thing here. Okay, um, okay, these things, and then of course three pairs of legs. So. These are uh, uh, the distinguished characters. Of course, as I said, the ants don't live alone. They're always group living. Social insects, that's why they're called social. Social means to live in groups. Okay. And so, uh, yeah. Which yeah. is the third part where ants are not found? Uh, can I take this uh, question uh, uh, last? Huh? Is that okay? Sure, sir. So, actually, or you can there are 12,000 species of ants, right, sir? Um, sorry, you can type the questions and I'll answer all that uh, later. So I'll first finish this. Okay. I hope you don't okay, mind. Sir. Okay. Thank you. And uh, why are ants important? Um, if you are, um, we always talk about um, all organisms uh, playing a very critical role in ecology. So ants are equally um, uh, very, very important. Ants are predators. Uh, the most commonest thing that in your home you'll see when if there is a dead cockroach or if uh, in your garden is something dead, the first thing to rush towards it are the ants. Ants will come there. They will uh, put uh, bite it into pieces, take back those pieces of meat back to the nest. Okay. So what are they uh, doing in their home? It's a role of a scavenger, um, and uh, they also hunt uh, other. Uh, organisms as well as uh, so for example termites uh, earthworms um, and uh, uh, very uh, uh, ants like the army ants can actually um, uh, do much more uh, uh, things i mean they can also bring down a frog or um, uh, sometimes even a small chicken i mean they can always or a bird they can actually um, go and attack and then kill them uh, so they are that way uh, predators and they also are a prey because you will also have seen that um, uh, spiders can eat the plants. Um, uh, they could be lizards eating the plants. Um, so what that means is um, they're an important link in the food web. So if you went to a forest ecosystem, if you went to forest, um, and then um, uh, the most invisible uh, organisms which are doing a lot of work uh, are uh, there are two uh, organisms. One is of course ants. The others are termites. So if you took up all the ants and then weighed them and uh, put all the vertebr invertebrates and took their weight as well, um, vertebrates, you'll see that 15 to 20 percent of the weight of the ants. Uh, uh, um, I mean, uh, if uh, there is 100 kg of vertebrates, uh, 25 kgs uh, will be uh, um, uh, matched by the ants. Okay, so almost like 25 percent of the biomass will be ants. So Can you which means, the point again. So what I'm saying is. Um, uh, if you took all the organisms uh, uh, in a terrestrial ecosystem, if you went to a forest, collected all the organisms, um, and then um, all the uh, animals, uh, then 25% of the weight will be only ants. Okay, so what I'm saying is, saying is if there's 100 kg of organisms there, 25 kgs will be ants, which means to say one fourth of the organisms in terms of weight are ants, which is. Um, uh, very interesting because uh, this uh, this means to say they are an important role in the food chain and the food web okay and then we also 
if you're looking at uh, in terms of earthworm, uh, we always uh, call earthworms as the farmer's friend, but ants actually uh, uh, excavate more soil than earthworms do. So, which means to say they are doing a lot of aeration of the soil, they are bringing back nutrition from below the ground up to the top. So, they are churning the soil, which is very important, typical in a forest ecosystem. Okay. Um, beyond that, there are many other things that they do. Uh, they also, some of the ants are known to pollinate as well. Okay. So, there are very important uh, critical link in the ecosystem. I mean, that's what I'm trying to point out. Um, so, next. There's a bit of a glitch here. I'm trying to move, move the slide. There's an ant left. It's a uh, prey. Okay. Sorry. Um. I'll. Uh, can I move on? You can put the question into the chat. So, uh, as I told you, ants are social insects like bees and wasps. They live in communities. They live in a nest. I'm sure most of you would have seen a nest entrance uh, in your homes uh, or in a garden. You would have seen an ant nest. And uh, the very interesting thing about an ant nest is that most of the ants that you see are females. Okay. So, if there are 100 ants in a nest, close to about 95 of them will be females. And um, within an ant's uh, nest, uh, you'll see that. Uh, Based on task, they're divided. Uh, they divide themselves into different tasks. Okay? So some ants uh, perform the role of workers. Some ants uh, perform the role of soldiers. Some can be nurses so that they can take care of the young ones. Um, within, again, these workers, there are some which can act as cleaners that clean the nest. And, uh, and the important person in the uh, important individual in the nest is obviously the queen. So the queen is large in size and what she does is uh, her role is to lay eggs. So throughout her lifetime she is only laying eggs. Okay. And uh, she is a as the name uh, says queen, she actually rules the nest. Her uh, role is to actually control all the members, direct the duties um, and uh, Males are very seen very occasionally in the nest. Okay. And as you see in the picture, you will see that the uh, ant, uh, the queen ant here has a very large abdomen. And uh, because that, that's because she, her job is to lay eggs. She stores all the eggs in her abdomen, which she lays. Yeah. And here you will see a nurse, uh, um, an ant uh, which has taken the role of a, role of a nurse, which is actually uh, maybe uh, helping the uh, 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 young ones. So our uh, job will be to actually not only feed the young ones, but also to clean them up, to actually push, uh, 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 carry them to safe places. So you can see the um, larvae here, which I'm pointing out, and then the ant here. And uh, you can see that the node which I mentioned here very clearly, there's a node here, the connecting joint between these two parts. Okay, And then you can count the number of legs. And of course, you can see clearly the uh, bent antennae that I was referring to, right? It's bent in shape like your elbow. And this is the close-up of an ant queen. So ant queen, you can um, just wanted to also observe the colors. I mean, apart from what we think uh, normally an ant is uh, red in color, or black in color, you can also see there's some uh, golden touch to this ant, right? Okay. And then there's. Sir, I'm doubt. And and then there is a queen here, which I've uh, told you a large demand. There are it is laid its eggs. Okay, so a queen. Um, and uh, I just want you to look at the colors, appreciate the colors. So it's not only black ants, red ants. You'll see that now there is also greenish tinge here, the orange color here. So uh, just to show you the diversity in colors among ants. 
and uh, whenever you see an ant um, as uh, uh, sir said uh, previously when he was introducing uh, uh, the subject as well he said ants uh, go in trails so how do they go in trails um, uh, basically uh, ants are good in chemical signaling so they are uh, of course called as the masters in chemical communications uh, like we communicate uh, using voice and touch i am talking to you that's one form of communication but ants use a lot of chemicals uh, uh, they uh, lay trails which uh, uh, are for different purposes when they spot a, uh, uh, a piece of food the scout ant or the ant which has spotted it what it does it uh, it um, um, from the source of the food to the nest it actually lays a trail of scent from its abdomen and then it will go back to the nest and then invite other ants and say okay i have laid a trail now please can you join this trail i will take you to the source of food and then the ants which are following will actually as they follow the trail will also add more of the scent so as may as more ants follow the trail the scent becomes more and more stronger okay that's one form of communication uh, that's recruiting uh, uh, ants to the food source but they also navigate using uh, 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 um, polarized light diffused light in the uh, atmosphere or the cloud then they can also sometimes some of the ants can also look at landmarks and find out where they are apart from looking at uh, the, the sky okay so so for a small ant such a tiny ant with such a tiny brain i mean to perform such complicated tasks it's, i think it's quite amazing and i just wanted to show some pictures of nests as well <clears throat> so this is one of those common nests that you will see everywhere the nest of an ant uh, with just an entrance but there are some very interesting ants uh, which build uh, different kinds of nests as well for example um, some of the ants actually decorate uh, their nest entrance with twigs and then also feathers so you can see a feather of a bird here if you are looking at this very carefully there's a greenish uh, feather here so these ants are called as diacama what these ants do is uh, they bring in feather, they collect feathers uh, uh, from the foreign feathers uh, uh, in the forest so what's the name of the ants again uh, diacama uh, you can just say indian hunter ant okay and what they do is uh, um, very interestingly every morning uh, or whenever they need water they actually collect the dew which is fallen on the feather so purposefully they build and uh, they'll bring in the uh, feathers and then decorate uh, the nest entrance and then uh, it's a ready source of water so just like um, now how uh, we all harvest water on our rooftop we all do rainwater harvest right so ants have uh, uh, are also known to do some Hi. such things okay and uh, this is another uh, uh, ant uh, called as phidol um, uh, i'll not talk to you i'll not uh, mention the, uh, the uh, uh, but commonly known as the fort ant so if you look at the ants uh, nest entrance uh, the nest entrance is here but it builds a uh, mud uh, round of uh, 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 compound wall of uh, I would say mud, uh, which resembles a fort. And uh, if you are going to forest areas in Dan Delhi, or if you are uh, uh, going to Maharashtra, some places, um, uh, especially in the Western Ghats, these ants are very common ants called as fort ants. Okay. So what I'm trying to, uh, by showing the nest, um, I want you to also appreciate the beauty of uh, uh, the nest building and then how they are uh, trying to uh, do. It. So. Okay, so uh, that's one. Um, there are leaf uh, nests. Some ants build nests out of leaf. If you uh, if you have a mango tree or a pomegranate tree in your home, uh, uh, if you have a garden, you will see these ants are very common. In Canada, it's called as Kenjiga. So these are called as Indian weaver ants. So what they do is uh, they actually make nests out of uh, leaves, 
So they pull the leaves uh, together, make it into a ball. And what they do, interestingly, if you are observing the uh, 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 the ants here, is uh, they are carrying something white in their uh, um, uh, uh, beak. Uh, I'm sorry, in their mandible or the teeth. Okay. So what they are doing is they are carrying their uh, ang one, and what they do is they coax or they press the ang ones to release silk. So the silk is used to paste the leaves together. Okay. So the leaves get stuck, and then uh, and the ants make it into a ball and then within the ball is where the queen and the family or the or daughters in this case live because the ant nest is comprises of its uh, of the queen and her daughters because all the workers and the soldiers the major minor workers are all her daughters so the story of an ant is all about the queen and her daughters okay and there is another interesting um, and here, uh, this is uh, called as the uh, uh, these ants actually make paper nests. Uh, so what it does is um, these ants are called as acrobat ants. Um, they actually chew uh, the bark of the uh, tree, and then mix it with the saliva, and then start pasting it. So they make it into a huge ball. So you can see there is this huge ball here, and then uh, within this huge ball, uh, there's a nest entrance, and sometimes uh, uh, rufous with woodpeckers are known to actually uh, uh, make their nest inside the nest, inside the nest of the ant. Okay, so this is, these are the acrobat ants. This is again a very common ant uh, in parks as well as in forests. Uh, so. There are ants which are blind as well. So not all ants have eyes. Uh, as you know, they all have uh, compound eyes. Uh, um, sir, and there are some some ants. So can, can you... I explain the last slide again? Okay. So these are these are ants, uh, acrobat ants, which may actually make uh, nests out of uh, bark of the tree. So what the ant does is actually. Um, One minute. What the, the ant does is actually uh, achieves the bark of the tree, then spits the spits it along with the saliva, and then molds it into a large ball. Okay, just like a baseball, uh, which is not nothing but made out of paper because it's now bark. Uh, the wood is actually chewed and then mixed with saliva and pasted into a uh, uh, baseball kind of thing, and then within the uh, Yes, you can sometimes have uh, uh, woodpeckers rest, uh, uh, nesting there. Okay. So what I'm saying is, there's also uh, association between uh, other organisms as well. And uh, there are, as I said, not all ants are wise. Sir, can you tell about the saliva all thing in the yeah. Can you do the saliva? Can it you tell? Yeah. Can you tell about the saliva again? I can't hear you. Sir, can you so do what the it does is it achieve. It, then what do they do to it? They'll mix the bark, the, the, they'll chew the bark with the saliva, mix it, make it into paste. So you start pasting it into a ball. Okay, a ball shape. Okay. And uh, uh, so can uh, all hands fit in it? Yeah, yeah, no. huh? Yeah. Because in the picture it looks too small. No, 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 it's a very big one. Huh? It's a big one. It will be more than a, a large baseball. Okay. Oh, okay. And uh, as I said, there are also ants which are blind. So these ants actually. Oh. Are, uh, yeah. uh, can we take questions later, please? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, so these blind ants, I mean, they can hunt as well as uh, navigate. They all do without look, uh, without a visual eyesight and visual uh, sight. So it is only through touch as well as with smell. So the antennae have chemical sensors which are used to smell, and they 
they can actually uh, travel great distance just by uh, scent alone. Okay. Then, I, as I told you, these are the acrobat ants which make the baseball shaped nests. Okay. Uh, if you look at it, uh, why they are called acrobat ants are because if they are alarmed, if you disturb the ants, they will raise this abdomen on to the top and uh, bend them uh, forward. When many of them do that, it's like uh, uh, a gymnastic play. Okay. And uh, there are other very common ants. All the ants that I'm talking about are all very common ants uh, that you can see in parks. So this is called as a procession ant. Uh, the procession ant uh, can go in very long processions. Uh, and the interesting thing about this ant the is uh, they like to eat termites. Uh, what is the spelling of procession? Procession. Procession. procession is here on the top of the slide. Can you see? Procession to yes, go in sir. a procession in a line. Yeah, okay. And then they go in a uh, line. Uh, but these ants are fond of termites. Uh, so, um, and uh, they don't have permanent nests. So, for example, uh, every three weeks they start shifting the nest from one area to another. They exhaust, kill all the termites there, then they move on to another nest. So, they build very temporary nests. Okay. So, there are uh, a few ants I mean, which have mastered how to jump. So, these are called as jumping ants. So, these okay. are ants like your, uh, uh, like your grasshoppers. They can jump as well. So. One of the very common ant, uh, which has now become very, very rare in Bangalore, is called as the uh, Apognathus, which is listed. The uh, scientific name is here. Okay. This is the uh, uh, Indian jumping ant. And they can also catch butterflies uh, uh, or any other prey when in midair. So they are known to do that. Okay. So you will see that their mandibles or the teeth are very long, scissors like here. They have very large eyes and uh, the, they're very uh, sharp. Uh, and in, in the nest, uh, there are only about close to about 400 individuals only. Okay? Very small size uh, um, uh, uh, nest. Um, there are also ants which uh, also harvest. Um, so some of these ant species are known to harvest uh, grasses. For example, uh, just like farmers uh, harvest uh, um, yeah. Uh, you, um, just like farmers, I mean, they That's harvest right. grass. And, yeah. So ants are known to harvest grass seeds and then store them in their uh, uh, nest. Okay. Then there's also an ant uh, named after Bangalore. So this ant was found in, uh, this was a new ant uh, for science, which was found in Bangalore, which is called, uh, named after uh, uh, Bangalore, called as Dilobo Pondyla Bangalorica. You can see the uh, spelling there. Uh, it was found on uh, one of those plumeria trees in uh, Kaban Park. So what I'm trying to say is uh, there are still many, many newer species to be discovered. The only bit is we have to be very uh, observant, uh, look at uh, what is around us uh, more, much more carefully. Yeah? And this Sir, is the most... uh, what is the before the Bangalore ants? What? What is before the Bangalore ants? It is called the Bangalore ant. It is called as Dilobo condyla Bangalore. No, 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 no. Yeah. So that the before one, before one. This is Monomorium. These are the harvested. Harvest. Yeah, which will harvest just like your harvest uh, farmers harvest grains. No, these uh, ants. What they do in uh, if you have been in gone to Kavan Park or Lalba or any BBMP park, you see uh, nest entrances with uh, grass seeds. Okay, what these ants do? Yes, collect all the grass seeds and then they will take it into the nest and whenever they want, they will break open the grass seeds and then eat up the fatty uh, fatty substance inside and throw out the uh, us. Okay. Okay. Sir. So this is the Bangalore ant and this is the very most common ant all of you would have seen. These are your black, black ants that you see in your houses because of uh, it's been zoomed it will look like that but it's called as a black crazy ant. Why is it called black crazy ant is because uh, they move in a very crazy fashion. You will see that they don't uh, usually move in a straight line, but they're all over the place. So it's called as a black crazy ant. And you have this uh, the red ants which bite. Uh, if you uh, stepped on it, you'll know why it's uh, called as fire ants. Uh, if uh, more than 10 or 20 ants bite, you, you feel like that your body is all on fire. So these are the red ants in your home that bite. 
okay which is called as a fire ants there are also ants which also make slaves uh, so what these ants are uh, what they do is they go and raid um, ants uh, workers of uh, other nests they bring back all the workers and then make them work for the colony so it's like keeping servants okay so these ants don't work but here you will see that they are bringing the young one of another ant when this young one comes out this this ant will actually work for the colony of this ant and uh, this is another and just going on I'll, a couple of slides and then we can take questions okay please hold on so the last uh, couple of uh, slides so this is one of the fa second yeah. fastest uh, uh, moving appendages uh, animal kingdom the Sir, uh, can you go slowly okay can you go a little slow okay last two slides and i'm done okay so you see this mandibles here the teeth the closing of this teeth when it finds a prey here for example if it's moving in the forest and it, uh, it finds a prey the speed at which it closes okay can be up to close to 126 to 230 kilometers per hour that means to say uh, less than 130th of a second it would have closed okay this is known to be the second fastest uh, closing mechanism the other uh, the first closing mechanism is also held by an ant okay and this ant why i have put this second fastest is because this ant is found in our uh, forest for example if you went to um uh, Kurg, or if you went to Dandeli, you will see the sand or in parts of Kerala you will see the sand so it's a common ant it is called the trap jaw ant okay so the i'll go to the last bit so what what are the things that we can learn from ants uh, one is as uh, sir said in the beginning sir, can you show the previous slide sure so what are the uh, uh, things that we can learn from ants um, as uh, sir said in the beginning the the one is as he said the teamwork is something that you'll see in ants that's very uh, uh, impressive you'll always see that they're helping each other they all they're always usually disciplined um, so they they uh, unlike most of us even if you have uh, uh, witnessed bangalore traffic uh, uh, where it's the most undisciplined at times, if you see ants are in a procession, they go in a trail, they are very disciplined, they make way for others, even if, if there is an obstacle, they make sure that they go around the obstacle, find another easy route, but they always stick to the lane, okay? Then um, ant vision is something people are researching, how do you, how does such a small organism actually uh, see uh, uh, the vision and is there some technologies that we can derive? Traffic management, I said. Then there are also uh, ants clean their body using their own antibiotics. So there are uh, researches happening on uh, ant-based antibiotics to actually see if we can um, to be used for medical applications. And then of course, uh, the last bit is formalin. As you all know, formalin uh, is a chemical that is extracted from um, ants, which are used to sterilize surfaces. Uh, now, these days we use alcohol, but earlier uh, uh, formalin were all used in hospitals, uh, operation theaters uh, to actually sterilize the substances. Okay. So, I just this um, last, uh, uh, I just wanted to summarize uh, uh, saying that uh, there's so much of uh, interesting things about small creatures that were around us and um, not all the time we should be looking only at lions, tigers, and elephants, but uh, these very small, interesting creatures, which do a lot for conservation, have a very important role in the ecology. I think um, we should also look at them. We should also learn a lot uh, from them. So with this, I will uh, um, end this uh, talk, but I'll, uh, take up some of no. the questions, OK? So OK, one minute. So I'll uh, all the questions that were on chat I'll take first and then um, and later I'll yeah. go to your. Uh, so, so yeah. Sir, so yeah. can I put the fire ants slide? Sorry, sorry. You put all your ants into your uh, uh, all the questions into the chat and then I'll take it up. Okay, because otherwise it will cause a lot of disturbance. Okay, I'll put some of those questions here and then I'll start answering them. Are ghost ant species situated in the, in India? So there are ghost-footed ants, uh, which are common in Bangalore, everywhere. It's called as Technomermix. Okay. Uh, so they are in India. 
So the other question is, is it true that the weight of ants is more than the weight of all human beings on earth? Definitely yes. If all the ants are put together, because uh, if there are 6.2 billion people on earth, uh, uh, they'll, have to, uh, they'll have to multiply that into 10 lakhs. Uh, that, that's when you uh, know the true number of ants across uh, That's true. That's actually way more than the weight of all human beings on earth. Do ants have two stomachs? Um, it's actually uh, an interesting question because um, they actually have uh, the split in a stomach. So the first part of the stomach, what they do is they actually store uh, temporarily some food. They go back to the nest, regurgitate or vomit, uh, bring it out of the uh, first part of the stomach and actually feed the ingwa. Okay. So the next question is... Again? Yeah, because they have to feed the one, right? Because uh, uh, they would have uh, uh, sometimes they, the the ones might not have well developed teeth, right? Or the mandibles. So what these ants do is they will chew it, make it into paste, then they'll bring it out of the stomach and then uh, feed the ones. So. The so what are baby uh, ants for? Baby ants will be larvae, uh, pupae, just like your butterflies. Okay. They go, they undergo a metamorphosis like that. Eggs, RBI pupae, and then uh, they come ants. So, is it only the queen ants that lay eggs, or do other female ants also lay eggs? Mostly, it is 99%, uh, uh, it's only the queen ants uh, that lays fertile eggs. But if other worker ants do lay eggs, it will be uh, sterile eggs uh, or trophic eggs, food eggs. Okay, that's what we call. Uh, but um, it's usually polished. For example, if a uh, if a worker ant tries to lay an egg, uh, other ants will prevent because they want, want to have a discipline. It's only the egg queen uh, uh, lays eggs. Okay, if taken to hatch an egg, uh, it would be about three weeks. Can queen ants fly? That's Sir? true. Queen ants can fly. Sir? I will. Uh, I will take your question. Please put it on the chat. Okay. Kids, uh, just just interven, uh, Sunil. Uh, kids, uh, please hold on to yourself. The questions you may put it on the chat box as the speaker Sunil is saying. And uh, if you finish up the chat box questions, you will definitely take over our uh, questions. Yeah. There, direct direct questions. Let 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 the speaker finish off with the chat questions. Okay. Then we'll proceed with the regular questions. Thank, yeah, you, thank, sir. You. thank you. Sir. Thank you so much. So can ant, queen ants fly? So before the queen ants mate, they all have wings and they can fly. But once they mate, what they do is they drop Hello. their wings. The wings are then eaten by the queen ant. They, she eats her own eat, uh, uh, wings. Then, then when she starts laying eggs, she doesn't have any wings. So what uh, during monsoon uh, or the, when there is pre-monsoon showers, especially in April, May, when the rain uh, rain supposed to come, you'll see that a lot of insects which ca come around the tube light or if there are street lights, you'll see a lot of ants uh, with wings that they're flying around that light, right, light bulb. So these are usually the queen ants and the males. The queen ants, when they are st uh, when they are not mated, and the males will have wings. Okay. okay? Uh, the next question is: Does every ant leave different scent or same? Every ant in a single colony will uh, leave the same scent but for each uh, species it will be a different scent okay so for example if it's a fire ant it will have its own scent trail the scent will be different for example if it's a odor ant that you find in your house uh, which is called uh, uh, in your house vasne irve illa us irve anta karitare so all the vasne ne different agirutte okay the scent will be different huh? And again, the scent is different for different tasks. For example, if um, an ant if it's, uh, wants to uh, leave the scent, if it's alarmed, for example, if it's a threat of an attack, the scent is different. But if it's, uh, if it's trying to recruit uh, its uh, sisters for food, the scent is different. So for each purpose, it actually does a little bit of uh, uh, mixture, chemical mixture, which is different, okay? And for, if, and for different ants, it's different, okay? And what happens when the queen dies? That's a very, very interesting question. So if the queen dies, uh, most of the time the colony dies. Okay. It's very, very difficult 
for a worker ant to become the queen it it happens in some species only uh, but uh, again the uh, worker ant has to now develop ovaries then it has to get uh, it has to mate and then it has to now lay eggs otherwise because the queen is the only egg laying uh, machine once she, she dies there are no more workers which are coming out there are no baby ants coming out so she uh, the colony will die okay so what are uh, far uh, far away? Uh, far away ants are again ants which are found in your uh, homes which uh, those uh, small red ants which actually uh, come come and eat away the sugar or the sweets if you kept in your uh, homes okay those are called as faro ants and then uh, where are weaver ants found weaver ants are the most most common ants uh, in, across india indian weaver ants um, if you have a mango tree pongamia tree in your garden or in the park or in the forest um, jackfruit tree you find these ants which are called as kenjiga kenjiga in kannada okay and the most interesting thing about um, these ants are uh, as i said they make uh, uh, nests out of leaves and uh, these ants are also eaten by people as well so in various parts of karnataka even in dakshin kannada there are people who make it into a chutney so because uh, weaver ants have uh, uh, for formic acid at the end of their abdomen so it um, uh, when the many of these ants are collected and uh, crushed it becomes a very very tangy okay. okay and in parts of bihar orissa they are actually sold in the market okay so you can go and buy weaver ants and then uh, you can use it uh, they also fry and eat it okay and sir then, i have a doubt one minute last last question okay and then i'll come to you you can you can put it on the chat okay please put it right. on the chat can all ants fly no it's only the queen ants and the male ants who can fly okay so the worker okay, ants sir. are fine. okay and then can you post your questions on the chat please so that we can have an order okay so there are uh, okay I'll, uh, we are running out of time uh, so i will be able to take two Hello, sir. two questions only uh, so i think this is very interesting conversation please uh, can you can you ask a question so do ants really form a gazette sir do why ants? does a male ant sir why does a male ant die after mating so it does not have a well developed digestive system okay so they are programmed to live for a few uh, couple of weeks so once that done after they mate you know, since they don't have uh, food uh, reserves uh, they will naturally die okay so you ask how are queen, queen ants born and queen ants selected these are very two very interesting interesting question this will be the last question i'll take uh, i will um, tell you both i mean uh, answer sure. both questions the most interesting so the queen makes groups like worker and soldier ants and the male of females huh yeah, sorry i can i will answer this question and come back okay so how are queen ants born okay this is very interesting and how are queen ants selected so what happens is uh, uh, once when uh, 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 the the then within a colony there's a queen there are already workers there are uh, already uh, the population into the nest is going up what the queen ants do is then she will um uh, 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 release a fertile egg okay uh, or a diploid yes. which has both x and y chromosomes and uh, when i can't hear you eggs, properly she i can't hear you properly the queen decides to lay queen ant egg okay so these are special eggs that she lays and some of these uh, uh, who i mean these queen eggs which actually hatch will, in some ants also they get some special food as well nutrition and that's why they develop into queens and uh, it's um, it's the prerogative of the queen to lay uh, when it wants uh, these kind of eggs okay so i think we have now uh, i am closing because uh, i think uh, many people are eager for the quiz and uh, once the quiz is over we can still take up some questions if there is time okay so people are mostly eager to answer questions now and uh,
and uh, the last slide of mine add my email id if you uh, still have many questions you can still uh, uh, send a uh, question to my email id and i will answer it okay i will uh, type my and email id okay thank you thank you thank you Okay, Sunil, uh, for uh, taking your detail session, actually the kids are uh, uh, participating in this uh, meeting. Have lot of now we are going questions. to start the quiz in another two minutes. Yeah, unanswered questions. Charge is there. going to take out the quiz. Yeah, uh, George, uh, just let me. Uh, one, two minutes. Uh, that question, the quiz session will start. The unanswered questions will definitely will be answered. Uh, you'll be uh, in, uh, put on the direct mail to them. Or you can again go back to the same presentation that will be uh, in the YouTube channel and also Facebook uh, of uh, First Department. That also will uh, clarify many of the doubts. Further, he has written a book on uh, ants itself, and they can many of can get get it from the markets and also go through the book. That's again uh, get more answers there also. Now I will proceed to the next session of our uh, webinar. That is a quiz. Uh, most kids are waiting for this session. So let's start. Uh, Mr. George to take over. So let's start. You can carry on. Yeah. Anyone is there? Ashan, please mute yourself. No. Yeah, that carry on. Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, yeah, one minute. Yeah, you can carry on. Yes. Can you see the first slide? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, let us start a uh, quiz. Um, uh, Yeah, uh, just before we start the quiz, uh, let me tell you the rules and regulation for this quiz, online quiz program. Uh, can you see the slide? Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. 
Okay, okay. Yeah. So the, the uh, rules for the online <laughs> follows. You have to answer. The, give the answer only in the chat box. So if you shout your answer, that is not eligible. Only in the chat box, you need to give the answer. There will be a total of 15 questions. It can be a one round, a one word question, or it may be a visual round also. After I put the question, you will get 30 seconds to answer the question. You have to type your answer in the chat box, chat box only. Okay. Whoever answer correctly, the fastest will be declared winner. Understand? Any doubts on this? No, sir. Okay. So, I know the questions. You need to give the answer only in the chat box. Whoever answer is correctly in the, uh, in the chat box correctly, he will be declared winner. Immediately following, uh, immediately after declaring it, declaring the person, person as winner, I will be asking them to give their full name. We will announce who got the answer correctly. And you will have to give your full name. Uh, that is for the certificate and uh, email ID and your phone numbers. Okay, it's very simple. So let's come to the uh, question. So you are not supposed to answer only chat, give your answer in the chat box. So here comes the first one. What is the number of species recorded in India? In India, you have to type your answer in the, you have to give the exact number. I see a lot of answers coming. I'll wait for 30 seconds. Okay, let us see the answer. The correct answer is 846. These are the number of species which is found in India. But there are, uh, like as uh, Mr. Sunil, our speaker had earlier told, there are 12,000 known species worldwide. But in India, 846 species have been recorded, of which 323 are very much endemic to India. And uh, there are a record of 257 species of ant recorded in Karnataka alone. So the total number of the question was, what is the number of species recorded in India? It, the answer is 846. <laughs> So the correct answer was given by Nishil. Nishil, please share your uh, email ID, phone number, and full name. Okay, we'll move on. How many groups are ants classified into? Like, you know, how many groups are ants classified into? Groups. I see a lot of, you have uh, all of you are experts in uh, fastest finger, a lot of correct answers, a lot of big, big answers also coming. Okay, let us move on. There are four groups. Most of the ants are classified or grouped on the basis of peculiar tasks performed by them. The major groups are harvester ants, beaver ants, leaf cutter ants, and army ants. Okay, the correct answer is four. Let us see who's uh, answered it first. Yes. Let's see. Again, Nishil has answered it correctly. Congratulations, Nishil. Followed by Tanish. You just missed uh, the point. Uh, I mean, by microseconds, you missed your uh, answer. So the, the task is to type fastest, and we should get the answer at the fastest. Okay. So we will move on. Identify this ant species. If all of you are uh, carefully seen your see the previous presentation, this is a very easy. To identify, identify this species. I see a lot of answers coming in fire ant, queen ant, queen. You have to tell the species, not the you know, whether it is queen or worker. You need to say the name of the species. Okay, let's see the answer. Yes, the answer is fire ant. A lot of uh, almost uh, seventy-five percent of the people have said it is fire ant, and uh, yeah, fire ants. As uh, Mr. Sunil had previously said, they are also they are commonly found in uh, in and around uh, in our country also. They are typically reddish or brownish in color. Uh, so the ants are these ants are omnivorous, feeding mostly on young plants and seeds. However, they can also attack and uh, live prey. All fire ant species can sting, and those stings produce very considerable considerable amount of pain. That's why it is you know you, you feel like you are in a fire. That's why it is called fire ant. And the fastest person to answer is. Vital Kumar Dage has uh, answered it correctly. Congrats, Vital. Please, you may please share your uh, email ID, phone number, please. Thank you. What is the study of ants called? If, uh, if I, uh, I don't know if uh, all of you have observed the first slide where Mr. Sunil Kumar's photo also was there. 
uh, this was there actually. So, um, uh, what is the study of ants called? Anthology. I see a lot of answers. Anatomy, microbiology. Yeah, let us see the answer. Myrmecology is the correct answer. The word myrmix means ant, logos means study. It is a branch of etymology focusing on scientific study of ants. Okay, the correct answer is myrmecology. And uh, let us see who has answered it first. Okay, Vital Kumar Dage has answered it correctly. Congrats, Vital. That's a good, very good going. So, we have a competition between Nishil and Vital Kumar uh, with two points each. Let us see. We will move on. Identify this species, ant species. Okay, it's a video. Okay. Yeah, just wait, You're just loading. Okay, I'll just play the video again. You have to identify it's the species. It's blocking everything. Is it coming? No, sir, I can't see it. Sir, it's fully black. See it, sir. There is some type of thing which is covering the whole video. Okay, no problem. So, we will move on. Uh, I request you people to wait for a one minute. We'll share it from other system. Just a moment. Hello, uh, sorry for the small uh, glitch there. Hello, can you ever, can everyone hear? Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. 
Yes, sir. Yeah, so, sorry for the small technical glitch uh, there. So we'll move on. Yeah, the next question is which hand makes the next dish like this? Which hand makes the nest like this? So we'll move on to the answer. Yes, the answer is fourth hand. As the previous speaker had said, uh, fourth hand makes the nest like this, like a fort. The nest is flanked by a raised series of con concentric clay rings as though to prevent flooding. So these are the ants. Four ants makes this kind of uh, very concentric clearings, which are uh, which uh, looks like a looks like a fort. And the fastest answer was given by Vital Kumar. Vital Kumar is leading now with uh, three points, followed by Nishil. Well done, Vital. So we will move on. On an average, how many times its own body weight uh, ant can lift? On an average, how many times its own body weight? An ant can lift. Okay, let's see the answer. Yeah, 10 to 50 times. Whoever is answered 50, I'll give it to them. The ants can lift uh, so much body weight, the ratio between their body size and body mass, their small size means they have a large body mass. And the proportion of their uh, their mass, that is muscle, is very high. Hence, they are able to lift very high weights. So the answer is 10 to 50 times their body weight. And the correct answer was given by Nishil. Nishil has given the correct answer. Congrats, Nishil. I think Nishil has caught up with Mr. Vital Kumar. Uh, please share your email ID as requested earlier. Okay, let's move on to the next question. What are these ants commonly called? Uh, sorry for the uh no uh, poor uh, quality of picture i see a lot of answers garden ants black ants beef ants let's see the answer these are called procession ants as i shared uh, earlier in the by the resource person these are called procession procession ants mainly they move in a straight line or a, in a group in a like a march fast they move to bring in food from the particular food source to order trial. Whenever, whenever the nest is damaged or when the food is not available, they move from one place to another to find another nest. So these are called procession ants. And may I know who's the Vital Kumar has, uh, come on kids. Uh, others also please type in fast. Only Vital and Nishil seems to be uh, doing it very fast. Uh, I request all the kids to you know type uh, their answer fast and you know uh, get the points. Sir, sir. Answers are all correct, but you know the fastest answer, correct answer will be declared winner. Okay. Fire ants are also called as what? Fire ants are also called as what? Red ants. A lot of ants are bidding. Red ants, red ants, red ants, beaver ants. Okay, let us see the uh, correct answer. Fire ants are also called as stinging ants. Okay, I, uh, though it is red in color, but it is uh, we are looking for an answer called stinging ants because of the sting uh, which gives, uh, which are very painful with a local burning sensation. So it can really become a big issue if uh, there is multiple stings which is happening. Okay, the correct answer was given by. So home supply, come on, good. Only two people have given it correct. Sohum Sapka has given correct answer first. Sohum, please share your uh, uh, email ID and telephone number and full name, please. Congrats, Sohum. Let's move on. Which ants captures broods of other ant species to increase the workforce of their colony? I repeat, which ants captures broods of their uh, other ant species to increase the worker force of their colony? Lot of correct answers I'm getting. Okay, let's see the answer. Yes, the correct answer is slave making ants. 
Leg making ants are uh, specialized to sparatize uh, single species or a group of species which are very close to them. These ants, as the speaker said, take the broods and uh, get it into their own colony so that they start working when the brood hatch. You know, they start working for the colony. The correct answer was given by Shivani. 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 Uh, Shivani. Shivani Perumpilla has answered it correctly. Congrats, Shivani. Please share your email ID, phone number, and full name. Thank you. At this point of time, the leader, uh, Vital Kumar Dage, is leading with three points. And uh, Nishil with uh, four, three. Okay, sorry. Uh, Vital Kumar is leading with four points. Nishil with three points and a uh, couple of people, Shivani and uh, Saple has uh, made with, with one one points each. Which ant makes nest by stitching leaves together into a ball? Very simple. All of correct answers. Very well, well done. <laughs> okay, let us see the answer. This was a very easy one. The correct answer is weaver ants. As uh, uh, as you can see in the picture itself, it weaves uh, leaves into a ball kind of uh, nest, and they can they be, uh, in a tree in Bangalore only. You can see a lot of these weaver ants in honge trees, uh, other uh, mango trees, and other uh, trees. There you can see this uh, weaver ant, which is very very common. Uh, weaver ants are very territorial and very aggressive when uh, you know an intruder come there. So the correct answer was given by. Jason. Jay Sharma has answered correctly. Congrats, Jay Sharma. You may please share your uh, email ID and uh, phone number, please. Thank you. Next question. Which is the longest living ant? This is a little out of this thing, but uh, you need to tell which is the longest living ant. How many years can they live or, you know, your approximate guess. You should name the name of the ant. Which is the longest living ant? Queen. No, I'm not asking about queen or worker, but I need to know the name of the ant. Godzilla ant, queen. Let us see the answer. Can you see the answer? Yes. Yeah. Queen was the correct answer. The correct answer is queen ant, Lassius niger. That was the answer which I wanted. Lassius niger is the longest. Uh, uh, living ant, which was recorded, it lived for 28 years and nine months in captivity. So that's why they were able to record its uh, age. And uh, the correct answer is Lassius niger, uh, which is which has been recorded as the longest living ant uh, till date. Shivali SK. Shivali SK has answered it correctly. And uh, very few people have, uh, many people have said queen. Uh, but uh, no, I wanted the correct answer as Lysias uh, Niger. Congrats, Shivali. Please, uh, please uh, um, uh, type in your full name, email ID, and uh, phone number, please. Okay. Which is the smallest ant? Ants are itself very small, but uh, we want to know which is the smallest of smallest ant. Black ants, black ants, arrow ant, higher ants. Possession ants, odor ant, air ant. Let's see if anybody has got it correctly. Has anybody got it correctly? Let's see the answer. The answer is thief ants. They are one of the smallest uh, uh, living creatures you can say in uh, uh, ant family. They measure from 0 0.7 to 22 mm long. Color is, as you can see, the, it is uh, in the, from the picture how it is being compared to a, a pen nip. This is very, very small ant. Measuring from 0.7 to 2 mm long. P fans. Who is the winner? Who is KR. The... That's huh? KR. Uh, somebody by name KR has uh, given it correctly. Congrats, uh, KR. We need to be your full name. Listen, so, KR, Ranjit SK, sir. You are logged in as KR. Please uh, give your full name and uh, email ID. And... But well done, uh, KR, because nobody has answered it correctly uh, except you. So very few people have answered. So you are uh, first uh, to answer it correctly. So congrats, uh, KR. You may give your name to the correct uh, full name. Uh, you can't uh, type in your name as KR because you won't be able to issue your certificate. Okay, thank you. So let's move on. Which is the largest ant in the world? Now we came to the smallest ant. Now let's go to the largest ant in the world. You need to give the name of the ant.
Okay, let's move on. Dainop Nara is the answer. Anybody has given this? They are known to they are known to measure between three to four centimeters in length, and they are found in humid forest and uh, Atlantic forest of uh, northeastern Brazil. So it's not uh, found in India, but it is found in the Brazilian uh, forest, uh, northeastern Brazilian forest. Okay. Anita, Anita. Anita A has uh, given it correctly. Anita, congrats. Anita, congrats. Please share your uh, full name, email ID, and phone number. Okay. Now, coming to the most venomous ant in the world. You know, most of us are aware that uh, ant bites are not good, but there is also uh, some ants which are very, very venomous. Which is the most uh, venomous ant in the world? Okay, let's see the answer. The most venomous ant is called the bulldog ant or the inch ant, which is commonly found in Australia and Australia, the east coast of uh, Australia, east coastal districts of uh, the states of Australia. It is also by the Guinness, it is listed as the most world, most dangerous ant, uh, uh, ant by the Guinness Book of World Record. Virmicia pyriformis, that's the ant, uh, you know, name. Bulldog ant or the inch ant, it attacks yeah. using both his sting and jaw simultaneously. It affects, uh, will be very, very, you know, uh, ferocious. And uh, there are also incidents of fatalities in 1936. The last one uh, was in 1988 when a Victorian state farmer was uh, uh, attacked by this uh, ant in large numbers and he, he, he succumbed to uh, uh, bite. So the correct answer is bulldog ant or the inch ant. Whose answer is correct? Shivani. Sir? Shivani. Shivani again has answered it correctly. Congrats, Shivani. That's very great going. Very few answers. Very few answers and Sir? Shivani got it right. Uh, uh, bulldog ant or the inch ant is the correct uh, answer. So, Sir? with this, uh, we come to the end of the ant quiz. I hope you all uh, enjoyed this quiz. Uh, one small message you see this picture uh, it's wonderfully written. Uh, if you want to have a proverb on the ant, uh, this is the picture which comes out uh, in uh, very strongly in the internet. Go to the ant, you sluggard, consider it ways and be wise. Meaning, like, you know, there are a lot of things uh, one needs to learn from ants. And when you look at uh, ants closely in nature, we'll observe how systematic or how robust their life, way of life is. Uh, so we need to learn as human beings, we need to learn so that there is a uh, law and order in our uh, society. Thank you one and all. Uh, please, um, we will just uh, in the, give you two minutes. We will declare the winner and the first and second and third prize. Shivali. Okay, uh, we got the... So we got the uh, winners. The, uh, the first prize goes to Mr. Vital Kumar. You can all of them be give a followed by Nishil George. And uh, third prize goes to Shivani. Shivani. Okay, there is a small correction. Uh, the okay, okay. I have been told that. Uh, uh, Miss Niranjana has answered it correctly uh, uh, using uh, Vital Kumar's ID. So the winner is Niranjana Dage. Um, uh, 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 first prize, second prize goes to Michelle John, and third prize goes to Shivani. Congrats, all of you. I hope you all like the quiz. And uh, we hope uh, we will we will be continuing to do these kind of programs in the uh, same time on a different topic. So keep yourself updated uh, with the uh, with the connections. Uh, with this, we come to the end of the quiz program. I hand it over to organizers for the next uh, set of events. Thank you. Uh, thank you, George, uh, thank for your entertaining uh, quiz uh, session. And uh, now, uh, if you have any quick questions, yeah, Sir Santosh. Please, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, thank, thank you, Mr. George, for your uh, entertaining quiz session. And uh, quits were very uh, on the toast to participate in the quiz. And uh, many people uh, got the right answers, but the person who got the uh, fastest fingers uh, got the prize and uh, went away with the prize. But everyone who participated is a, really a winner.
because knowing things is more important than getting the prizes if you are aware of the things that what is happening around us uh, as we learnt in the session entire day entire one hour one and a half hour session uh, the ants even though very small in their size they have a big role to play in the ecosystem and uh, they they can as you know that uh, such a small creature can lift uh, a weight more than uh, 10 per 10 to 50 uh, times of its uh, own weight so and the discipline that they follow and the uh, the, contrib the contributions they do for the environment and ecosystem is very great as human being we need to learn many things from the ants and the protection of these small creatures definitely will have a impact on the ecosystem and uh, i thank one and all for participating actively in the session and uh, George, especially for making it so entertaining, and all the CE partners who have been uh, actively working on this space for uh, drawing good questions and, uh, uh, and keeping this session alive. And uh, my special thanks to the speaker of the day, uh, Mr. Sunil, and uh, the keynote address uh, was delivered by uh, uh, our uh, additional PCC of Market Sir, many senior officers, Madhu Sharma, Madam. Sima Garg Madam and many other senior officers of the department and our outside also people have participated. I thank one and all and I thank the CE partners who are hosting this one. I would like to thank the uh, ICT wing of the first department who have put it on the YouTube live and uh, apart from the people who are participating here on the WebEx and uh, many uh, more people participated live on the YouTube uh, session and uh, all the presentation that happened today are also will be available on the departmental website and please uh, if you missed out any points you can uh, take it from there also and for, for the information of the kids who are participated will, in this quiz and in this session uh, will get, get a participation certificate duly signed by the pccf wildlife of the state and uh, uh, thank you one and all and next week also until i think uh, 7th of october every week uh, exactly at the 4.30 we will be joining for a webinar on different issues and uh, making it interesting. Uh, thank you very much, uh, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. We'll end this. Yeah. <laughs>